In this demonstration, I want to show Geomagic Control X. Geomagic Control X is our industry leading metrology software. Our wheelhouse in the industry with metrology software is the fact that we're able to seamlessly blend the measurement between scan data and probe data inside of our software. And we address measurements with scan data as a native entity. It's not something that's added to our software. Um, so let's dive right in. As you can see on screen, I have a CAD model that we've brought in and that is our reference data. And reference data is where all of our information that we're going to compare to is. And then the measured data right here, I have a scan data set that I was able to drag in. Um, so it's it's drag and drop. I can bring in a CAD, just drag it into the graphics window here. It'll automatically add it to the reference and add the scan data to the measured. And I can measure point clouds or polygons and work from there. Now you see that I don't have an alignment established yet. So as long as the parts are scanned and they're reasonably the same size, we can come over here to the alignment section and we can do an initial alignment. And we just hit initial alignment and what it'll do is automatically do a best fit alignment between the two objects. So now that we have the alignment between the two objects, as I roll over the surface of the part on the CAD model, you can notice, here, I'll just do this and hide the scan data. You'll notice that other features pop up now that we have an alignment. And the reason why that's so is not only did we do an alignment, but in the background, we do a thing called pairing. So we essentially map out the scan data that belongs to this CAD face and even identify what that scan data in that region should be, whether it's a plane or a constant radius, right? A cylinder, those sort of things. So what we're doing is we have this automatic extraction of the features in the background. So now if I want to use that best fit alignment for my analysis, I can, but I could also come over and establish a datum alignment. So if I wanted to say, I want to align based on this center cylinder, maybe this bottom face here, like so, and then this side tab and hit okay, you'll notice I don't have to create any reference geometry. I don't have to uh, create and extract on side uh, on the scan data. All I'm doing is clicking the CAD faces and then hit align. And then now we have realigned the scan data based on that datum reference frame of the center cylinder, that bottom plane and the side tab. So that's why the initial pairing of that initial alignment is so valuable because it makes it so easy to automate all this stuff which we'll touch on more later. So now that we have an alignment uh, between the scan data and the CAD model, we can come over and do a 3D comparison. Now, when you have millions of measurements describing the shape of a part, doing a 3D comparison is a natural process because you can easily just graph the deviation between those measurements and the CAD model. And you see here that we're doing a 3D comparison you can come in and you can change the different ranges for the color bar. So here I'm just 0 0.04 and I can come in and say 0 0.005 and adjust the tolerances of that color bar. Now it can be noted that right now I happen to be in inches. And if I want to accept that color map and see the visual deviation between the two objects on the screen, I can do that, but if I want to switch over to millimeters, I can do so just by coming over here inside of the preferences, scrolling down and changing my measurement, my default measurement over to millimeter. So now you'll see everything scale and you'll notice that everything is set properly and scaled over, but everything is editable. So if I wanted to come over here and I wanted to edit my 3D comparison, I can do so. Hit next 
and I can change my color bar based on my new unit. So if I wanted that to be one millimeter or 0.1 for my color bar, you see everything is fully editable and can be rebuilt on the scan data. So it's essentially like having a parametric tree over here, but for metrology. Now, once I have the color bar set, um, I see the pretty picture on screen where I can see the deviation, but what if I want to know specific measurements in specific locations? That's where I can come over and create comparison points. With comparison points, I can just click on the surface and you can see the specific deviation in that exact location here. So you see here, I'm just clicking different locations on the model and you're able to see how much deviation there is in the different locations here. Now the software will remember those locations for next time. So if I need to measure another one of these parts, I can automatically measure those specific locations on the next part in the same exact spot. Now you also have the ability to uh, create these with a pattern along curve, all different kinds of options in here. But for the sake of today, what we're going to do is just click some different locations, rotate the part to a very specific location. And you see if I click on that control point object over in the tree, I can actually assign the current view to go into the report that we are eventually going to create. So as a general rule, when I'm using the software, I will assign my viewports for the specific measurements as I go. And I can do that for the 3D comparison as well. If I wanted to reassign that viewpoint for the 3D comparison, I can do so. And you'll notice over here on the datum alignment, I can, I can come in and I could hide that 3D comparison, zoom in and change the view so it shows so it shows the different angle of that datum reference frame in the report there so that's how you can assign your viewpoints for the for uh, the reporting now let's actually get into some traditional measurements um, so now you see I have the CAD model on screen. If I want to come over to the Dimensions tab, I can um, click on different faces on the CAD model and it'll automatically extract the measurements from the scan data and the CAD model at the same time. So you see on the left-hand side, I have traditional measurements. On the right-hand side, you see I have GD&T dimensions. So what I'm going to do is start out with what we call Smart Dimension. Smart Dimension will basically dimension whatever I click based on the context of the selection. So if I only click that radial location, you'll see that it just gives me a radial dimension. It's going to measure on the scan data and the CAD model at the same time, the reference value, the measured value, and the deviation between the two. And if I just hit accept, we just created our first dimension. Now that's a very simple dimension. I click on one CAD face, but now, if I wanted to dimension something like the height of this part, if I use the smart dimension, you'll see that I can come in, I can click on the bottom face, and I can zoom in and create, click on the top face, and then I can drag out a dimension. So you see, I use the same smart dimension tool, and based on the context of my selection, it determines that you must want to measure a linear dimension. So it measures from that plane to that plane and measures the linear dimension between the two. And then I can hit accept. Now I can also delineate exactly what I want to measure by hitting linear dimension here. So if I wanted to come over here and say I want to measure from this cylinder to this cylinder and create a linear dimension, I can do so using that tool as well. So you see what we're doing is measuring from the center line of that axis there to the center line here and you also have a lot of options in here so I can actually say I want to measure to the max so you see it's going to measure from the furthest extent of that cylinder to the center or I could say max to max min to min you get the idea here that you can actually select those conditions of the arc so from here the dimensions are very simple to do I can say I want to measure an angle from here to there 
you see here I can measure it that way if I want to and just create all kinds of dimensions on the surface of this part um, so now let's go ahead and click on that group hit save that view create a new view here turn that one off and then we can actually create GDNT callouts. So if I wanted to do a flatness callout on the side surface, you see here that I can create GDNT flatness callout. If I want to create a datum reference frame by saying this is my A datum, you know, this is my B datum, and this is my C datum, I can then use those to create a GDNT callout here. So if I wanted to do a GDNT callout on this cylinder, and then you can select your datum reference frame here. So A, B, and C. So you see how we can create GDNT callouts as well. And we also have the ability here, if I go ahead and save that, we can also do 2D cross sections as well. So if I come in here and I say I want to do a 2D cross section, and you can just select default locations here. And if I just drag this down through the part, I can come in and say, I want to make those same sort of dimensions that we made in 3D, I can make them in 2D, and I can even align the direction too. So if I say I only want to measure in horizontal or vertical, I can do so. So that is my 2D dimensioning. We'll just create that other one because I didn't accept it here. And there we go, we created some 2D dimensioning. So once we're done with 2D dimensioning, I wanted to talk a, a really quickly about the automation functionality within Control X. So you see that we've created a bunch of dimensions and then I can come over and say, I want to generate a report. I can determine what belongs in that report. And here's the preview of the report with all of the different things in here. There's my 3D comparison. There's my result data with my comparison points, my 2D dimensions, and so forth. So this is my report. I'll go ahead and exit out of that. But the, the important thing to understand here is the ability to automate the software. So everything that I've dimensioned so far can be automated. Now, if I want to go ahead, this is just kind of a simple way. I can just go ahead and delete the scan data out of this file and hit rebuild. And you'll see now that I have no results, I can actually save this part if I just came over to file and save. And this can be a template file. So now every time I'm ready to measure parts, I can just drag in a scan data set. So I'm just gonna drag in a scan data set into the graphics window and I just hit rebuild and then it will rebuild all the dimensions that I created on this CAD model, and then I can report on them. So that's one level of automation. So once that finishes here, you'll see, I'll just hide the scan data. It measured all the same things that I just measured on another scan data set. So that's one level of automation. Another level of automation is I can come over to what we call a batch process here. Batch process will allow me to just point to a folder full of parts. So if I had somebody else in another department, even at another location, scanning parts and adding them to a folder, I can say add files. Let's pretend there were 10 different scans in there. I could say add all 10 scans. Um, and then I can dictate what kind of report I want. Do I want to save a separate project file for each one, where I want it to go? hit apply, and then it will chug through and measure all of those dimensions. Now, the last uh, type of automation that I want to bring up is the fact that we also have what we call automation server in the full professional version. And in that version, you can point to a folder and watch that folder and the software will grab the scan data from it, automatically measure it and output it on demand. So that is what we call automation server and that's a third level of automation. And then we also have, you can kind of consider it the fourth version. It's kind of the wild west, we have visual scripting. So you can create visual scripts, which is a form of automation as well, but visual scripting will open up GeoMagic DesignX to a whole other world of automation from there. 
so this is my very quick demonstration of geomagick control x.